Today we're going to take a look at polar equations as far as the graphing calculator is concerned. Uh, right now, if I were to hit y equals, you notice there's a y there. At least you're supposed to be. I had told the other class to fix that. And if I'm trying to graph something polar, do I really want it to say y equals? What would I prefer it to say? R equals if at all possible. So right now, obviously, this calculator is not set up at least the one you see up here, to graph polar equations. We have to change the setup so that it is ready to do that. Yes? Do you have to press the mode and go down to the fourth one and go over to the Yep, if you go to mode, it, mode is where you're going to find most of your options. And whenever I graph anything that's going to have anything to do with trigonometry, meaning sine, cosine, tangent, I keep it in radians. It's just smaller numbers. And this last one right down, or the fourth one down, it says function right now. And that's what we were graphing with y equals, was functions. That second one over is parametric. Uh, it's something completely different. And that one there is polar. So that is definitely the one that I want highlighted if I am going to graph polar. And so there it is. And you notice on this particular button here, just right of my green button, it says x, t, theta, and n. And do you notice how I'm on the third op or option over? And so it's going to turn into theta whenever I hit that button. Okay. When it was all the way over on function, it be turned into an x whenever I hit that button, correct? And so now that's how you figure out uh, what you want it to become there. Uh, so that's kind of where you want your settings as far as this goes. And now when I hit y equals, it's actually r equals. If you have any of these plots up here on, for example, if it looks like that, you are going to want to turn them off. And to turn them off, all you have to do is go up hit it blinking, hit enter, and that turns it off. You want them all to not be outlined, basically, or have a black box around them. Okay. Now, what you're going to want to do is open up your textbooks to page 474. We're going to graph a couple together, and then I am going to have you finish up the rest of them on some graph paper, get some nice sketches for me, and go from there. On that page, you notice at the bottom, number one says to graph r equals 0.5 theta. So all you have to do is go 0.5. And where's that theta button again? Yeah, next to the green one for me. I think what's yours kind of peach color, I guess, is on yours, right? OK. So 0.5 theta next to it is kind of peach on yours, I believe. Oh, OK. Now, if I were to hit graph right now, it might not graph everything they want, because on here it says, after it says 0.5 theta, it says 0 has to be less than or equal to theta, and theta has to be less than or equal to 8 pi. Well, what's that mean? What's theta in this problem? It's the what? The angle. The degree or the angle. But seeing we are in radians, it is the angle in radians. And it's saying to only go from 0 to 8 pi, because let's take a look at that particular graph. Just look at the equation. What's that going to be? Spiral. Spiral. So is it ever going to stop? So it's saying just go from 0 to 8 pi. There's no sine or cosine. Okay. So what we're going to do to change it is we're going to go to window, which is this one right up here. And notice it says theta min and theta max. Well, according to the setup they gave you, what's the theta minimum? Zero. 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 What's the maximum? 6.283. Okay, up here it says 6.28. What's it say in your book? 8 pi. Now, what the calculator is going to do, after you type 8 pi, it's going to turn it into a decimal when I move. And that's fine. Okay. Pi button's over here on the food button. Theta step. It's very important for you to understand what this is. Some people last period did not pay attention to what that stood for and then couldn't answer any questions I asked them later. Theta step. Theta is still the angle. What that's asking is how often would you like the calculator to find a point for you? How many degrees or how many radians? How often? And what have we been doing? We've been doing pretty much 30 degrees or 15 degrees, correct? And 30 degrees is enough, but if I put 30 in there right now, that's the degree answer to that question. That's going to be a problem. 
pi over 6. And the nice thing is you can just type in pi over 6. So pi divided by 6. And all your calculator is going to do, though, is it's going to change it to decimals because that's what it knows. And so it's going to find quite a few points for it. And the smaller you make the step, the more points it's going to find. Because okay, it's going to look for a point every time you tell it to. X min and max, what that is, is it makes how big your X and Y axis are going to be here. And do we really know exactly what this graph looks like yet? We know it's going to be a spiral, but it could be a really small one. It could be a really big one. So let's just leave them. Standard is pretty much negative 10 and 10 for X min and max. If that's not what you have, you might want to change that. X scale and Y scale is just how, how much do you want a tick mark to actually count as. It says each tick mark is going to be one. That's very acceptable. So get your settings all the same as this right here. Yes? Well, in the next problem, you might want it to zoom in or something, so you might change your window because maybe it'll be very small. Or maybe you want to zoom out, and you'll, you know, that's when you would change these things. Because it says 8 pi in the book. Zero, zero to 8 pi yep. for this problem. Everybody ready? Here we go. We're expecting what when we hit graph? There it goes. I just pressed graph. So that's what, it, now here's an important question. What would change? What would change if I went back here and typed in 2 pi instead? Wouldn't go nearly as far. What do you mean by that? It wouldn't be. It would just stop. You told it only goes 0 to 2 pi, so it stopped. Okay. But again, if you want it to go 0 to 8 pi, it's just going to keep looking for values. Okay. okay, so when Mr. Boquist told you to not have any of the plots on, it probably would have been good for them to be off. The big thing that has a box on it. It's supposed to be off. I already told you how to get rid of it. That's why you should listen when you are spoken to. I know. You forgot to hit theta. Okay, so we're going to go to the next one. And where should we start? Window. Not window. Y equals, which is technically for us, R equals. We're going to go and do number two together. What's the first thing I should type in then? First thing I should type in. Three. Square root. Now, what does square root do automatically, though? So we're going to have to close that off at some point. And cosine is next for us, so hit cosine. And now wait a minute, cosine gave me another parenthesis. Yeah, close off too. So now what should I type in though? What's my angle here? 2 theta, very good. So 2 theta. So which one's this really closing off? This one, is it? Yeah, it's closing off the one for cosine. And then if I do the next one, it'll close off the square root. Technically, with this problem, you probably could have gotten away without that because there's nothing after it. But in any problem, like you want to divide by something after that, you got to make sure you close it off. So is that the same thing? Yep. But now this says not to go from 0 to 8 pi, it would go from 0 to... Now, where did we change that? 0, 2 pi. Do you think pi... Ooh, went a little faster. Pi over 6, is that still... That's probably pretty good. As far as we know, that's all right.
And here we go. What's that? It says two pi in the problem, so that's what I put. Hmm. Now, have we graphed any that look anything like that? No. So we have to solve this problem. The calculator did as good as it could. So what are some things we could change to make this graph better? We zoom in or zoom out. OK, we could zoom in or zoom out. That would work. And to zoom in, the easiest way to do it is hit the zoom button, because that's where they'll have all the zooms. And number two is to zoom in. But you see there's a little blinking, and that's basically a crosshair, as I can show you what it looks like. See, it's right there. What you want to do is put that little crosshair right in the middle of where you want it to zoom in. And I'd say right in at the origin is actually where I would like to zoom in. Once you have that little crosshair right at the middle of what you would like to zoom in, just go ahead and hit enter. Let's see if that helped. Yeah, not really. Hmm. So what else can we change? Okay, should we make the step bigger or smaller? Smaller. You make the step smaller, and that's in window. If you make the step smaller, it's going to look for more points. So right now it's 0.5 approximately, right? Yeah, that's pi over 6, so you can either change it to you know pi over 12, or what I normally do is if I know I just need a whole bunch of more points, if the calculator is going to do it for me, does it really matter to me how small I make that? No, so let's just go to like point one or something like that and see if that helps okay so point one so every point one it's going to look for a point for me again i don't have to graph it so let the calculator do it let's see if it helps well it helped a little bit do you think that stuff should be filled in probably have we ever had some that stopped yet no that should be filled in so what's something else that we could possibly do Okay, we could make the step could make the step even smaller, meaning x and y. We could. I probably would do that because that zoomed in a little more than I like. So let's go to negative five and five. Make sure you go negative five for the min and positive five for the max. If you do it the other way, it gets really confused. And negative five, positive five. Well, let's see if it helps. It may or may not. Did it help? Well, not really. So there is one more thing we could change that we haven't changed yet. We could kind of defy the problem a little bit. And not go 0 to 2 pi, but let's go out further and see if it helps. So let's go 0 to 8, <coughs> eight pi. <coughs> nope, didn't really help. <clears throat> Although it is still going. That helped a little bit. I'm betting if we go just a little bit further, we'll be good. I'm going to do 10 pi. Mine's not working. Mine's for a while. If you hit on or something like that or enter when it's graphing, it will pause. <clears throat> so probably let it finish before you do that. And we'll just try this. Yep, still not quite, but it's pretty close. Oh, it's still trying. I put 10 pi. Still graphing. It's trying to close it off. Oh, here it goes. It might do it. Okay, so it got pretty close. So how come that helped it fill in? What did it really do? It just kept tracing over the same thing, and it just kept to get closer and closer each time. So it pretty much is just a bow tie. Okay. <coughs> so any questions on the things you can change and what effect it has on the graph? Okay. Then what you need to do is, on that page, do problems 3 through 8 and get a sketch on here. <laughs>